Live from the Business Radio X studio in Atlanta, it's time for Dental Business Radio. Brought to you by Practice Quotient. Practice Quotient bridges the gap between the provider and payer communities. Now here's your host, Patrick O'Rourke. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to Dental Business Radio. Super excited to be here with you today. This is your host, Patrick O'Rourke, and I am the founder and CEO of Practice Quotient PPO Analysis and Negotiation. I'm also the host of the show. Thank you for listening again. And uh, acting CEO of True Blue Dental Network in California. You can check that out too. With me as always is Jam Master John Ray and the production booth on the Wheels of Steel over there. There. He doesn't say much during the show because he doesn't have much to say usually. I'm super excited to reintroduce my friend and insurance business colleague for a number of years, uh, Mr. Josh Rowland. Josh, how are you, sir? I am fantastic, Pat. Great to be here again. That's right. Well, I'm happy that you are here. You have a very fancy title now, and so you are with Centro Benefits Research. Yes. And um, great people. In your title, I'm going to say it for you. I forgot it. <laughs> Is the ancillary consultant market leader. Yes. Now, what market is that, though? Is that a state market? Is it this national market, the global market? The universal market. Universal market for you know, you've ancillary. got Mr. Universe and that for insurance. I see. Yeah. All right. I'll buy that. It's better looking. All right. No, it's. I appreciate you not coming in with just underwear on yet. No, it's market is part of the country. I work on a good portion of the East Coast for Centro, Georgia, Tennessee, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Vermont, and Rhode Island. Do you see that there is a difference, a huge difference between the states as far as what they're looking to do from ancillary packages? I do. A lot of it has to do obviously with industry and is an employer in just the one state or are they in multi-state? But yes, we're seeing interesting differences and some interesting trends as well that are crossing some of those differences. Gotcha. And just as part of the reintroduction here for our listeners, Josh Rowland has been a longtime benefit consultant for some of the premier benefit consultant firms here in Atlanta, Georgia, but they've done business throughout the Southeast and really nationally and was one digital. And now they have, there is a, the central benefits research is a bit of a, an offshoot, which is a more prestigious and I almost think take like, I like to think we're think tank. No, it's what we are is we're a, a general agent and kind of a, so we kind of work, we do, we work with consultants helping them. Benefit um, consultants, yes, yeah, yes, not so. practice management consultants for correct, those. Uh, correct, yes. Uh, very important. Medical insurance has really taken up so much of the oxygen out of the room now for employee benefit consultants, and they just don't have time anymore to spend as much time as they would like in some of the ancillary practices. So we help sure. them with that. Gotcha. I see. So you're long been a thought leader or an expert in the field, right? It's not just me saying that this is just a given. It's Josh Roll and anybody who knows that's been in the industry, right? And so you are now taking your studies to another level, but also helping out some of the other agents that may be smaller. And when we say ancillary, what we mean by ancillary is non-medical. Correct. So you're talking about dental insurance, vision insurance, life and disability, and then the work site and voluntary benefits that an employer will offer to their employees through payroll deduction. Okay. So here's a softball question for you. Why do the employers offer benefits like dental vision life to their employees? What's their rationale? It's attracting and retaining good talent. And we're entering a fairly challenging labor market, we feel, for the next 20 years. It was not accelerated, maybe exacerbated by covid but COVID didn't really cause it. But it did show that we are in almost a decreasing labor pool for the next 20 years. And there's going to be a fight. It's going to become labor wars where you're fighting for good employees, getting new ones and keeping current ones. And a, a big component of that is going to be around what is being offered in the ancillary benefit space based on what you let the employees buy themselves or what you buy for them in the dental vision, life disability and VB space. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. So in the dental world, COVID was – profoundly impactful because of the hygienist that didn't necessarily need the income. So then they left and they haven't really come back. Oh yeah. 
So it's a big problem. Yeah. And so there's also a lot of competition for new graduates, especially specialists, but certainly I think all of the doctors that will be graduating here soon. And so benefit packages for them become, I think, they should become more instrumental. I don't hear it talked about a whole lot, but I may not be as part of those conversations. As a business owner myself. How good is your dental insurance, Pat? We do not have dental insurance because I can do math. (laughs) (laughs) And I just use my FSA or my my HSA. And really, I would get some dental insurance if I was a very large group employer and I could have pulled the risk across lots of people. But because I'm a smaller employer, we have adverse selection and then it would just wouldn't make financial sense. Adverse selection can hurt. So uh, I love dental insurance companies. I do. I know you're listening. Smooches and hugs. That and, should be the name of something, Smooches and Hugs. <laughs> I don't know what, but I, I think it's going to be your next podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Smooches and Hugs with Pat. <laughs> See, this is why they don't let me. Definitely not on TV. I'm too beautiful, but obviously it's right. sketchy for radio. Too. Right. I just feel like we should all be dressed up like Care Bears if it's going to be called <laughs> Smooches and Hugs. and then, Or maybe it's a punk rock thing and you're going very ironic with it. I don't know. It's, it could be. Sorry, I've taken you way off topic. It, it does, I don't, but it would make for good tattoos. It'd be like the Rolling Stones. So like perhaps we'll explore that more in our next episode, and we'll call it Smooches and Hugs. And by the way, listeners, if you like this idea, we can change the name anytime. I just ask the sponsors, me. So Sponsor, what do you think? Yeah, right now I'm on the fence, I'll be honest. I'll you just send me the swag. Let me see what the swag is. We we'll get marketing on it. Yeah. John Ray Ray over there. You've taken notes. Somebody wake up John Ray, please. All right. Good Lord. And <laughs> at any rate, this is what ancillary, the ancillary market is. And so major medicals is. <clears throat> major. What'd you say earlier? It takes, sucks all the air out oh, of the Oh, yeah. For the, uh, from, from the consulting point of view, there's so much energy and effort and expertise required in major medical insurance, and we're including prescription in that as well, that the consultants are having less and less time to spend on ancillary benefits. But it's also the employers, right? So mm-hmm. I'm busy. If I'm the CEO of Acme Widget Making Company, which would make my mom less proud, then she would. Then I'm sitting there and I'm like, look, I'm just trying to attract and retain some widget makers. And, and, and you can only do so much of that with medical because medical is very expensive. Right. And, and it's commoditized a bit, it, right? It can be. Plan designs are becoming more and more similar while we're seeing a called maybe more of a homogenization in the medical world around plan design. I understand a lot of HSA plans. I'm a big fan of HSAs. I think in medical insurance may become more like auto insurance where it's paying for the major things, but auto insurance doesn't pay for your gas, doesn't pay for your tire change, doesn't pay for your oil changes. But if you hit a tree, it's going to pay for that. Whereas the ancillary field is still very diverse in its creativity and what specific benefits it can provide. And the carriers can offer some very different elements, not just in dental, but in all the other spaces as well. So it's a great way for employers to begin to diversify what they're offering their employees or paying for their employees around the whole scope of standard of living. So Mm -hmm. if you think about it, life and disability insurances, they protect the current standard of living for a family if the worst were to happen. Dental and vision insurance enhance the current standard of living. And then the worksite voluntary, the the Aflac-style products or Colonial, there's 50 carriers that sell those products. Those really protect the standard of living at retirement because they are what stands in the way of needing to take a loan out from a 401k if an unexpected medical event were to occur. That's a really excellent point. Actually, so I'm a big believer in disability insurance. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. As, as you well know, I'm certified in disability too. Not a lot of people really understand the nuances of it. And you know, for dentists, that's a huge. Oh, massive. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just curious. Let's work out on that for a second. For, I'd say years, it's been a while since I've been out there, but you're looking at principal, guardian, There's standard. There's five carriers that probably more that write or can write a very good disability policy on the group side, which is what's obviously offered to a, to an right. employer. I think the challenge is that there's so much flexibility in group disability that what a carrier can do, as far as what a carrier can do, that a lot of consultants just won't have the time to flesh all that out as far as what all the possibilities could be as far as what could be covered and how it could be covered. My, my standard or our standard disability analysis is about 75 lines in Excel, and there's a lot more that we could be covering, and that's a good kind of first run at it when you're comparing policies and carriers. And then you've got 
the individual disability insurance market to sit on top of that group market can be even more nuanced and complex, but also very important for protecting the standard of living of the family of that dentist and their staff Sure, should the worst happen. I think COVID made us all more aware of our mortality and the impact of that mortality on our families. And it's nothing that we love to talk about. With disability, we only get to engage with people at the absolute worst possible times in their lives. So it's important that we build those benefits to be very strong to pay to pay those families and those individuals when the worst happens to them. And it does. And that's real insurance. You yeah. Earn, you really say real insurance, but I'm a big believer in it because if you're the primary earner, it's like I am. Yeah. You know who said this? I'll give credit to Thomas Hunter James. Oh, yeah. T.H.J. Exactly. Over, at, I think he's at Mercer right mm-hmm. now. And he said, he said, Pat, look, it's like this, right? It's very simple. If you have a machine in your basement and it just prints out hundred dollar bills all day long, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That's pretty important. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And he's so if you know, you have insurance on your car in your house. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, this is spitting out three, $400,000 a year. Wouldn't you put insurance on that? And I'm like, hell yeah, I would. And he's like, that's what disability insurance is. Yeah. And so then it's a lot of it gets into the nuance when you need to make sure that you understand that depending on your occupation, what your goals are, et cetera, how much money your family has, your wife's family may have, or how smart your kids are. Do you need to send them to, uh, are they going to get a scholarship? I don't know. I'm not blessed enough for all of that. I'm but. hoping my kids stick after my wife more than me. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. I wasn't going to say anything, but. Oh, yeah, listen, I'll send my kids to get homeschooled over here, please. Seem to be about the same age. Yeah. So are you seeing then? Let's stick to a general national. Is there any, let me ask this just to differentiate. Is there any difference really between large group and large group, or let's say midsize, 100 to 500, 1,000 employees versus small group, which is under 100? There are, uh, as, as far as what the carriers can offer. The line's probably not at 100, it may be more at 50. Okay. But there's still a lot of flexibility in what can be done in the disability space. There, there are certain carriers that will focus more on the smaller group, and certain carriers will focus more on the larger. But as far as the level of protection, great protection can really be provided across the board for that. What we're seeing is benefit designs that used to be thought of as more of only a large group employer are now showing up. Or there's more interest in the smaller group market for them because they're recruiting the same people. And so the smaller groups need to be able to offer very strong disability contracts with high benefit amounts and the carriers are responding and providing that for them. We're seeing the trend go more from voluntary disability where the employee buys it if they want to the employer is going to pay for it. And then if the employer pays for it, you've got the issue of taxability and I'll spare everybody the fun there, but that's becomes the tip of the iceberg into disability analysis. And a big element too now that I'm starting to see more interest in is around coverage for loans. So if you go out on disability and you have some student loan debt, can the carrier provide extra money to help with those payments? And that obviously that costs more for that type of policy, but that's in the dental space that's becoming of interest. Gotcha. Well, the other thing that in the dental space they should have is business overhead. And if they have partners buy out just in case somebody gets sick, which I'm telling you, like I've seen it. They work with their hands very carefully. So there's a lot of, there's a higher probability of disability. With, oh, and they're bending with down their neck too. Yeah. 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 So we, that's disability. And are we finding that most of, is there any t- sort of trend of bundling all of this t- together or how are you just putting it into an enrollment platform? That tends to play a little more around size, but yes, we're seeing a lot of bundling together because carriers will do some cross discounting. So if you do dental vision, life disability with one carrier, as opposed to splitting it out across the others, there can be some price benefits there. As they get larger, they tend to be more siloed, but there's even more of an interest to bundle in the larger spaces as well. And there's, it's totally different risk, like dental versus disability. So dental and dental insurance, if you have a mining company, for example, or somebody who manufactures dynamite, right? That's great for dental, right? Great risk for dental. Right? It'd be tough on disability. That could be workers' comp though. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You got to yeah. mix that in. But job or industry type does play into the rating factor for sure. Indeed. And indeed. And how have- what the risk is for radio hosts. It just depends if how much John Ray has been drinking that day. <laughs> <laughs> they, t- they told me about that, John Ray. Yeah, we have to sign a waiver before you come in. You just didn't know it. What has been interesting, let's talk about, let's jump into dental insurance. Sure. I like dental and vision because they're the only two benefits really that show up on Instagram. <laughs> Selfie. 
All right. It's all about your eyes and your teeth. So all we're right. seeing not as much amputations, not as much. And so we're seeing more of an interest in some of the cosmetic elements of dental insurance begin to pay. So we're seeing changes in designs there as well. So our teeth is teeth whitening covered. Right. Things like that. And so there's a, there was a contest of one of my clients. I'll give him a shout out to win you dental group out South Carolina. And it was on Instagram. I like the gram. I'm on IG Pat underscore J underscore O'Rourke. That's O U R K E. For those of you who don't know any Irish people. And I'm not on the gram. You're not on the ground. No. You should be, especially as your fashionista ways and all of your compelling rhetoric. I'd get myself in trouble. No, I haven't so, got myself in trouble. I'm only on LinkedIn. I don't have Twitter. I don't. I did at one point have Twitter and Facebook, but I froze all that yeah, stuff. So. I will turn this thing on live right now, <laughs> and we'll go. We'll go live on the go ground. Live. Yeah, that's fun. So if you ever see something from me on LinkedIn, actually LinkedIn is real on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Somebody hacked me. Gotcha. All right. Hey, write that down, John. Let's create a John Josh Roland account. <laughs> so it so they do show up and those are what people ask for, right? So they're like, Do you got medical? Okay, great. You got dental? dental people snacks. love yep. dental insurance, right? Yep. They do. And so this is what I explain to my dental dentists when I go to organized dentistry or study clubs or stuff like that. I'm like, look. The number one reason why people do not go to the dentist, there's empirical evidence. It's because they don't have dental insurance. Okay. Number reason number two is it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only if you use pliers. Maybe I'm going to the wrong dentist. Maybe you're going to the wrong <laughs> dentist. Yeah. And, but the number two reason is they don't know how much it's going to cost, even if they have dental insurance, because no. it's not True. as fascinating of a topic to the John Q public as it is to Josh and Pat. Crazy. I know. At any rate, it's there and people want it, but the variation in plan designs there's not, it's not like Baskin Robbins with 32 flavors. It's more like 612 flavors. 612. Okay. That's lower than I, would, I tell people it's like 10,000. No, possibly that too. But you're not just looking at annual max, right? Is this a thousand dollar plan? Is it a $1,500 plan? Is it a twenty five hundred, four thousand unlimited. There's a couple of unlimited plans. Sure. A couple of carriers to do that. Then are you self funded Are you fully insured or all that fun stuff? But you're getting into the different types of treatment areas. Is it, how is preventive covered? How is basic covered? How is major? But then you break you can break basic and major into twenty or thirty other categories and all of those can be assigned different co insurance amounts and if the deductible applies or not. And are we gonna roll over part of the unused annual max or are we not? Are we gonna say preventive services don't count against the annual maximum? So the I like annual that. maximum is only reserved for basic and major services. And are we gonna cover adult ortho and what type of adult ortho and all that kind of fun stuff that we can do? So are there gonna be waiting periods involved? Are there not gonna be waiting periods involved? So there's it can not quite as complex as disability, but it can get pretty sure. complex. And again, it tends to be the larger you get as an employer, the more complex you want to get into it. But I'm starting to see the interest really go down market to say, hey, we've got a demographic that's older, is more interested in crowns and things like that. And they're historically always paid at 50%. Can we pay it at more? Absolutely, we can. You're going to pay more in premium for it, but you absolutely can. So customizing those dental benefits or those ancillary benefits, customizing them to a specific employer, not so much buying it off the shelf, but a lot more customized, tailored approach, if you will, to ancillary benefits is, is becoming popular, which makes it fun for nerds and geeks like you and me. Yeah. I miss, miss the game quite a bit, actually, especially around one, one season. The, the implants, just to, while we're on the subject of plan design, I remember back in 2008, 2009, I was Eating on the table going, look, we have empirical evidence that demonstrates that implants are going to be better than bridges over a period of 10 years. Like we have plenty of evidence. And so they finally started putting it in there and not pricing it out of to Mars, like loading the rates by 10 points or something. And so I would, this has become big, right? So there's lots of implants and they do generally have a less failure rate. They're going to last longer as long as they were put in by a licensed professional who knows what they're doing and not somebody who's working out of the back of a food truck. I went to the wrong place then. Yeah. Yeah. You probably got a gold tooth though, right? It looks good. Yeah. There you go. That's like a parting gift. (laughs) It looks good. I like it. (laughs) It shines like actually looking to see if I had one. I almost (laughs) had you. there. (laughs) You look like Joe Pesci in home alone. That's how the kid knew it was him. So shit, I got lost. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's been one of my goals for today is to see if I could get you far enough off topic that you got lost. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's hard to do. 
Yeah. yeah. I'm going to re- bring it right back. I'm going to circle back and we were talking about implants. And so implants, are they covered 70% of the time in major? Oh, that's a tough question. Hunt- yeah. It's probably the majority of them are putting it in major, but I'm starting to see an interest for that to creep up or to create their own category where implants are now category four call it category five, where if you've got preventive is one, basic is two, major is three, ortho is four, and implants can have their own category with their own annual max and their own co-insurance percentages and things like that. It, it can get really... That sounds, sounds complicated. It is. Then you got to go build it in the back end. Most of the carriers are, are built for that, which was an interesting thing that they could build that or built it so quickly, or unless they're just lying to me. Now, I think that they just taped another Betamax to the VCR <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, sure, we got a module. <laughs> we had some programmers come in here with some duct tape. Now, I could be wrong. I'm just joking. Don't get all sensitive. Now the insurance carrier is going to be mad at you, Pat. Listen, if you disagree with anything that I say on here, you're welcome to come on the show. John Ray Ray will put on some music and we'll have a little dance. Okay. We're live in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't hide. We have had insurance companies on here before, so don't be scared. I'm nice. So, yes. I'll vouch for that. Yeah. So the, I'm a fan of implants being covered. I think it's a great benefit to have. So they don't work as well in vision insurance. Eye implants quite aren't quite where the dental is. But maybe one day. Sorry. Are you serious? Is that a thing? No, I was being. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he got Pirate John Ray over there, woke up real fast. <laughs> He's like, I can get a new glass eye. <laughs> now, that one looks good, bud. It does. It doesn't. Sometimes it creeps me out when it's looking the other direction. Yeah. Anyways. All right. So, with our dental, so we you would say that annual maximums are going up now because what happened during COVID? COVID hit. Then the industry, and I still say we sometimes, and I know you guys don't all want to claim me, but some of them, some of you do. So thank you. We, the insurance industry, like the dental insurance, when everybody shut down for six months, you don't have to pay any damn claims. And so your loss ratio went right down to 30 or 40, which is awesome. And then, but then there was some pent up demand and then it started roaring back. So what are you seeing now that we're in 2023 and we're looking at, you're looking at a rolling 12, rolling 24. What do you see? Yeah, we're seeing claims have come back strong. There's, I've had conversation, I had lunch today with a great dental carrier and just before I came here and they're looking at trends saying we're going to have to start pricing for this. Gotcha. So utilization's up, costs are up. There's going to be a, an obvious impact to premium. I don't have a magic number on that yet, but it's going to be higher than it was last year. And so we're seeing it. Annual max is beginning to change as well partially to adapt to that and partially to help in recruitment retention. If you have a $5,000 annual max or or most of your employees going to max it out, probably not, but that looks really good in a employee. Right. uh, And and this is what I hear all the time, but it's a good tip. Like NADP shout out to everybody in ADP, CU San Diego, the, the, they have an actuary round table, which is awesome. Like you would love it. It's great. And they're talking, they're always like, everybody talks about the maximum. The fact is that here's the evidence and 5% of people hit it. But based on what you're saying is if only 5% hit it anyway, you don't know who that 5% is going to be. Maybe it's you this year. Maybe it's not you this year. Maybe it's Bubba who hasn't seen the dentist since the Reagan administration. Maybe it's John Ray. Yeah. I wasn't going to say that. He's looking at me funny now. I know. I don't, that, his that's his glass eye. eye. <laughs> <laughs> He's not looking at you. He's playing on his phone. He's playing Candy Crush over there. I've never played Candy Crush. No? Oh, it's for the highly intellectual folks. That's why clearly. I haven't played it. <laughs> <laughs> so costs are coming back, right? So the staffing issues that have hit everybody also have hit the dental insurance industry. So I go out and I speak a lot and... Sometimes it's like torch and pitchfork. The provider community speaks one language and the payer community speaks another language. And I'm like, look, I know that there's sometimes there's claim issues. Okay. And I know sometimes you, you're on phone and you don't get the answer that you want. I've worked in a call center. I've ran dental insurance call centers. That's what I did yeah, right. years ago. Right. When I had less gray I called hair. call center, Pat. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I have a tattoo to prove it. I uh, just don't have to see it. And anyway, it sounds very glamorous, and it is. It's like champagne, paparazzi, limo rides, hot air balloons, dental insurance. Who doesn't want to work there? Yeah. It's, I think this is where you were going with that, Pat, is that the 
while dentists themselves and their practices are struggling to retain and recruit talent, so are the insurance carriers. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing it in, in, in implementations when you're bringing on a new carrier or getting claims paid or getting a file feed set up or billing. They're struggling as well to retain and attract talent. And it's being felt everywhere. It's not just on the provider side. Does that make you reluctant to move benefits from oh, an employer? I think that can definitely play into the calculus of that, to use a horrible business term. Calculus. Calcul- yeah, to play into the calculus of it. Because it's it's not a pleasant thing sometimes to have to do that, even with everybody all firing on all cylinders, when there's a good chance that there's going to be some issues because we have staffing problems, then it, HR people and CFOs have other problems besides benefits. So what? I know it, it hurts my heart to say that, but they have other things to think about. And it, it definitely plays into that. And it plays into it with the broker community as well, because they don't want to bring in a solution that causes a headache and on their recommendation to move from carrier A to carrier B and carrier B didn't have enough staffing in certain situations and it didn't go quite as well. That looks bad on the broker and a broker doesn't want to jeopardize compensation from the medical plan over a move on the dental plan, which pays a a fraction of that. Yeah. Let's move the group life over here for one cent savings. And then they can't get anything loaded and you lose the entire group. Lose the entire group. And just word to the wise. It's hard to be a broker and a consultant. Yeah. No doubt about it. There's no, it's it's a tough job. I would, it's, it is. It's not all champagne and roses. Only half the time is the champagne and roses. The the other half is pretty hard. Sometimes this was billiards and moonshine. (laughs) When you get to the prestigious ancillary consultant market leader status at Centro Benefits <laughs> Research. All right. That just means everybody gets to beat on me. All right. So Aren't you the expert, I Josh? Get, I get called on when it's messed up. Aren't you supposed to know all of that stuff? I'm supposed to, but. Okay. <laughs> so that means I can just sit here and not worry about it at all. And if something goes wrong, if it goes right, I'm just going to say it was all my idea. But if it goes wrong and it turns into a dumpster fire, I'm going to get that Josh Rowland in here and be like, yeah, that, right, that guy right there. That's that, true. Is that how it works? That's how it works. All right. Well, that's why you get paid the big bucks. Hey, 20 bucks is good. <laughs> so <clears throat> the dental insurance companies are coming. Do you have any... What are you seeing? Let's go to a feature perspective. Are they, I like to jacking it up to 5,000. All right. There's risk there, which Absolutely. makes your underwriters make them very nervous. The uh, risk is not as big. The actual risk to go from a thousand dollar plan to a $2,000 plan is much greater than to go from a you know $2,000 plan to a $4,000 plan. It's not the same risk at that point. But if you have a, a group that's self-funded and they want to really increase their annual maxes, they may want to fully insure for a while to see what the actual claims are going to be in a stable environment where it's a fixed cost and fully insured versus taking the risk and being self-funded. And they play insurance carrier in this new plan design that they created and aren't quite sure how the claims are going to run. Or they may be fine with uh, keeping itself funded there too. But those are good conversations to have with an employer. Yeah, and I, that's very creative, very smart, actually. Oh, let's jack it up to 5000 get somebody in here to take the risk, take the risk and for you. see what happens. Are you seeing any, when I was selling large group business, right? I walk into the boardroom. I said, my name is Patrick O'Rourke from this insurance company. Very large one. And we have the largest network in the country. And then the lady from Aetna comes in right behind me. She says, I'm from Aetna and we have the largest network in the country. And everybody says the same stuff. And I can't disprove her. She can't disprove me. Is this still the game 10, 12 years later? There's elements of that are the same. It can be difficult for carriers to show differences depending on how deep you look. And it can be hard to prove a negative. Say they can't do that or they can't do that as well. Okay, prove that's hard to do. So, you know, that's another reason why there's risk in changing carriers. So it's lamenting how hard it was to be a broker. It's hard to be HR too because that. Rolls to them if it goes wrong. That's why they turn and yell at the broker or turns around and yells at me. Could do HR. No. I don't, That's no. God's work. That's tough stuff. Yeah. If they were allowed to slap people, probably <laughs> I could do it. But if, since that's not allowed, why, yeah. I'm just joking. Violence doesn't solve anything. It's just a joke. People come on here. They're like, you can't talk about slapping people. And I'm like, I'm just joking. John Ray was about to slap you. I know. I said, I have, I got my running shoes on today. 
luckily he's got just that peg leg to go with his little pirate eye <laughs> he can't get to me what was i talking about we're talking about dental insurance companies we're talking about increasing it to five thousand dollars we're seeing the same thing on vision too even though this is a dental show the vision allowances for frames and contacts, the $100, the $150 allowance that's been in place for forever, we're starting to see meaningful creep upwards to 200 250 bucks for that. What's the inflation right now? We've never seen it in our lifetime. This is it. This is our 70s moment where we tell the kids, you just don't understand. You could go crazy. I got a 7% mortgage right now. Mm-hmm. Well, I got a 3% mortgage. I know. Sorry. I'm jealous. But you want to buy a house? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you mine though. <laughs> I heard your taxes are like crazy in City of Marietta. <clears throat> now you're gonna get me in trouble. That's all good. You're a voter. You're a pillar of the community, yeah. just like John Ray. He know he's the unofficial mayor of North Fulton County. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so those of anybody that's local knows what that means. He is the man. I don't mess with him a lot, but it's just because it's he can't talk on the show. So let's go back to the network. So there is, there used to be regional networks and then they got bought up. There used to be some regional players. They got bought up. Argus got out of Tampa, got bought by Aflac. Then you've got Always Care, which is out of Baton Rouge, got bought by Unum. And there's different, so the consolidation in the dental market is also happened where you have work site companies that are trying to get into group dental. Correct. Cause the goal is to be able to be a A to Z provider for your client. If you're an insurance carrier to have one carrier for dental vision, life, disability, critical illness, accident, hospital indemnity, permanent life insurance. And there's other even benefits beyond that. So that makes it easier for an employer to make a change. If they've got everything with one that becomes attractive, there's some pricing benefits there, but also one neck to squeeze, squeeze if something goes wrong. So I think I'm absolutely seeing that trend of wanting to get into more benefits than just one. So it'll be interesting to see what some of the singular dental carriers or the singular vision carriers do in response to that. I'm actually excited to see what the market does. Uh, I am as well. I was, it's still new. These Unum and Affleck are massive, in, massively, they're huge companies and they're very successful in their own right. They've got their model down, like, bam, they know what they're doing. And so... Like on one, on, on one hand, I'm like, how hard is it going to be to put group dental into that? And then you enroll it, right? It, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, I've seen the enrollment and the group folks get together and it's like they're from different planets. What's interesting with those two examples you mentioned, Pat, is they're coming at it from slightly different approaches. Unum's coming at it from the disability side, that they were a big disability carrier, then they added worksite, and now they're going to dental and vision, where Aflac was a worksite carrier first, and then they added life and disability through an acquisition and now into dental and vision. So it'd be interesting to see how both of those play out over time coming from two different ends of it as far as how the systems are built. So it, it, I think it'll be very interesting. And the, are the enrollment firms building this in too? Are the enrollment, so by enrollment firm, you mean a firm that specializes in just doing enrollment? They just those, do the enrollment yes, for yes. large so companies. They're fine whether it's all combined under one or if, whether it's split out. Where it can be beneficial to the employer with one is if all benefits are on one EDI feed so that you have an easy, easier technology set up and interface there. But yeah, that's so. the, where you want one third to choke right there, because if there's something going wrong, that's, yeah, that's where it is. It's, it, it's getting that system to talk to, or that payroll system to talk to the enrollment system to talk to the carrier. And there's some great interfaces being built, some APIs being built. A lot of carriers are investing heavily in that API world between the payroll companies and their systems mm. to make that interface easier for HR. Cause it's, that's probably one of the bigger challenge areas that we have. Cause that affects billing. It, it affects eligibility. Or can you prove somebody's got the insurance when they show up and hand their card and they run and say, no, we don't show you as covered. Or in an explosion. Yeah. No. Oh yeah. I'm sure they're, they're throwing chat GPT. That's true. Yeah. So I'm sure that problem will get solved very soon. Have you, I'm wondering, can chat GPT do a radio show about dental? <laughs> they probably could, but it would be nowhere near as creative. <laughs> and that's just my personal opinion. It may be a little biased. Now, there's always been talk about medical dental integration, right? I could give that spiel back in 2005. I'm starting to feel old. Uh, it, 
there's a lot more chatter these days. So I hear a lot of it. There's 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 classes on how to build for cone beams and osseo integration and all of this other stuff. Build medical, usually out of network, some not really in network most of the time. There's some of the DSOs are doing some interesting stuff where you're looking at value-based care. Have you seen any of the value-based care and what's your take on that? Seen a lot more of it in medical. I think it's absolutely moving into dental. I'm probably not the best person to wax poetically about that right now. But a point off that of what you were saying is a lot of it's done out of network. I am seeing a big move in out of network benefits in dental to really increase the percentage of UCRs there from 80th to 90th to 95th or even higher. So, Have you seen network disintegration or diffusion or erosion, let's call it, because it won't be material. You really have to look for it. Yeah, it it, it seems almost in more specific geographies, um, but it's definitely something that's on my mind and on, I'm sure, carriers' minds as, as well. It, and that would make for a really interesting panel of both dentists and insurance carriers to scream at each other about. Uh-huh. I'd, I, I'd pay 20 bucks for that. I try to put one together at the... GDA last year. There's a, is that when somebody threw a chair? <clears throat> I don't know. There's no video re- oh, okay. re- recording of that. But the I do try to bring in folks from both sides. The only thing that I always ask is that everybody be polite. And that's part of what the show is. It's like opening up eyes. That's snuggles and hugs. Like snuggles and hugs. I thought it was smooches. Maybe it was. I should have written it down. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm sure Reverend John Ray has something for us. We could listen to the show. There's an idea. Ah, uh, go play golf. So, I don't play golf. That's weird. I'm one of the only insurance people who doesn't play golf. He, yeah, I tried to play for a long time, but I'm really competitive and goes against every natural athletic instinct. So I'll still go out sometimes and just whack at stuff. It's because it's a nice day. It's a nice park. Go. So let's go to the dental insurance carriers and because i want to stick with this topic is dental insurance radio so here's a tip that i have for you and for all of the other benefit consultants that may fall under your sphere of influence and my own which is dwindling over the years they don't see me as much your geos or when you're running network disruptions make sure you're looking at current data look at your duplicates so the provider directories, laws, it's like a finger in the dike. So they just suppress some of them, but there's a lot of duplicates. It's still not the same. And there's been a movement. That's, that's a very good point. That it's been going on where people are getting out of network. So there's, I think if you took a snapshot of even, I would say, what is this, even eight months ago, you will probably see a 5% reduction. Wow. Yeah. It just depends on the region. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, and maybe I guess part of that makes sense because if the dentist doesn't need to give up the network to keep the chairs full or didn't need to give up the discount to keep the chairs full, why would one do that? And there's some animosity I'm and sure. some misunderstandings out there and some of it's legitimate, some of it's not, but there's also a lot of noise and people on Facebook just really villainizing the dental insurance industry. See, that's why I'm not on Facebook. The it's only reason I'm vitriol. I swear, this, this is a true story. The only reason I'm on there is because the marketing people said I needed to be on there in order to have a Facebook page. And so now I only go on there to talk smack to my mom <laughs> <laughs> and post pictures for Nanny and Graham of the kids. And, but every time I go on there, I do. I feel like I lose three hours of my life. Mm. I don't know what happens. And then I like I try to correct some of the mis. I'm like, right. who, why are you saying that? Who the hell are you? This is silly. You I'm know? so old that I try to make sure all my texts are properly grammar and things yes, like that. Yes, me yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Apparently, I'm an idiot for doing that. Does that make us look dumb then? I think so. Not on LinkedIn, so. I don't post much on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. I'm just there. I see. You're a lurker? Yes. A benevolent lurker, which should be the name of something else, too. Benevolent lurker. I don't know. <laughs> Write that one down. I am. And I, don't, <laughs> and, I, and I couldn't tell you how to spell benevolent. B-E-N-E something. Or B-E-N-A. I'll ask chat GPT. There we go. There we go. So that's the tips that I have for dental insurance. I think that's a good tip, Pat, because it can be hard to really do a good comparison of networks sometimes. What we see a lot of brokers do is they'll take the top 
100 or 200 utilized providers Mm -hmm. for a group for the past 12 months with tax ID numbers and all that, give that to a carrier and then price those specific ones to say, are they in-network or out-of-network? So that's a good way to to do it as well. But you you can't obviously grab every claim that's done that way. And let's say, right, well, my firm tends to represent established high caliber docs. Okay. Just by the very nature of the business, if you think about it, our job is to convince my colleagues on the other side of the ball that our clients aren't entitled to, or have earned the right to a bit more compensation than everyone else. And, yeah. and I know it sounds crazy, but then you're not in a hurry to pay people more money. And so they tend to be more established and they tend to not need to discount. And, and I think that the folks that have the shoot spa to just drop plans, whether it's on our council, we're very methodical. We don't, we're not anti-insurance, just so you guys know. We're neutral, okay? But the ones that do that are going to tend to be your more top-tier docs in, in their community, okay? And maybe in also in their community, but they're going to have deeper roots, okay? And so they're going to be more involved. And so I'm going to use the standard. It's going to be the CEO's wife. All right. Or the CFO's wife. Every time. Every time. And everybody who's been in this business for longer than two years knows what we're talking about. Because what happens is the wife goes to the pediatric dentist or goes to the wherever. It could be an oral surgeon and it's the second sibling or it could be the general dentist. And they're like, I had to go there. And then they said that they weren't in network and then they made me pay out of my pocket because they said they were going to send the check to me. And it was so embarrassing. They wouldn't even take Venmo. It was awful. It was like, aren't you in charge of this stuff? And you're married, Josh. Yeah, me too. And so see, I was like, I'm not dying on this hill. (laughs) <laughs> he picks up his phone. He calls Josh Rowland or doing the Josh Rowland's benefit consultants. Up? And he goes, how, Josh, how many different dental insurance companies are there in Florida or California? And Josh is like, what, 50? Sure. Yeah, about that. Right. No, no joke. And then you go, give me one that has Dr. John Ray in there. Right. That's right. Shout out to John Ray. Uh, and, and click. Yeah. That's it. That's the end of the call. Right. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is what we're going to do. Boom. And you find it and you replace it because you will switch it out. Because yeah. that's how it works. Sadly, a lot of this becomes commoditized. Yeah. And the, the it, wives? Oh, <laughs> no. The, the dental insurance carriers <laughs> or the brokers. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Because just as quickly as the broker may have to switch out the dental carrier, the HR may switch out the broker. Mm. And that's what the brokers are afraid of because they assume all brokers are the same. They assume all dental carriers are the same. And they're not. No, um, not by a long shot. But it is a challenge that they have to deal with, which is why I think the out of network benefits are becoming very important in dental and increasing those reimbursement levels. And HR loves to just sit there waiting to take feedback on the dental insurance plans. That's what HR does. It, it, it's all they do. Gotcha. They love it because <laughs> they have hearts their of thing. Their hearts of gold. Because nobody ever comes to HR to tell them they love the benefits. HR only gets the worst end of it. Good point. So everybody out there, you should call your HR and tell them you love the benefits. You will make their day. They will fall out of their chairs. This is also true of the dental insurance companies. True. Nobody ever calls you up and says, hey, thanks for paying that claim on time, buddy. That's true. Or you referred us to that endodontist and the root canal great. was exquisite. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Yeah. So gold star for you. So be nice out there. It's be nice. We're yeah. all in this together. Smooches and hugs and snuggles. <laughs> For sure. Now, the last thing you know, I'll bring up, because this has become a little bit of a, I wouldn't know, say the controversy, but for lack of a better word, a minor debate. Mm. There are some states in which they... The you, state of panic. The state. And there's some states of the United the state States of, of America. State of denial. State of, which state are we talking about? So there's some carriers that will send a check to the patient. if you They will prevent assignment of benefits if to non-participating providers. You can't do that in Georgia, so it doesn't happen. But there are some states like North Carolina, California, Missouri, and Pennsylvania, where this is a pretty serious problem, and Texas, parts of Texas, where you have not all carriers, but some carriers, they're like, well, we're just going to send the checks to the patients. Now, for me, like, number one, have, has this happened on any large groups? Has this been a choice? Is this something that you discussed with the employers? It's not something I've had to deal with. Now, going back to my title, the market leader, whatever we I called myself, my market is none of those states. Oh. Makes it a little easier for me. 
New York. No, no, I don't have New York. God bless you. <laughs> Anyways. But that's an interesting thought, and that should be part of the conversation if you're in a state like that to, to know that this could be a potential issue. Right. Because eventually, as the guru you are, it's going to come, it's going up, to come too, up. Right. Because more and more states are doing it. You know how it is. I mean, that's very interesting, Pat. You taught me something. First time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, I'm just going to say what I got to say, even though you don't have any experience in it. I'm just going to state my opinion. There you go. All right. And my opinion is that uh, preventing assignment of benefits to a non participating provider is inviting insurance fraud to the membership who is paying premiums because the member gets a check. They're like, woohoo, got me a check. And then they don't go to the dentist, right? And so it interrupts their continuity of care and leaves the carrier vulnerable for more long, long-term long higher cost. But if the dentist isn't getting paid, they have to raise their prices to right. cover the money they didn't get paid on from the other patients. That's a great point. Great point, Josh. See? Not just another pretty face. <laughs> I do have the perfect face for radio. (laughs) But my take is that nowhere in our corporate mantra or code code of conduct or et cetera, does it say we want to take our members and make mis get them to be criminals with misdemeanors or felons, depending on the law and how much money that check was for. I just, I've looked, I haven't seen it in our corporate statement or our cultural philosophy or whatever warm, fuzzy, snoochy boochies, kisses and hugs we want to call it. I've looked, I've seen smiles to the universe. I've seen we want to bring oral health care and access to everyone, but nowhere does it say we want to make criminals out of the members. I just haven't seen it. No, I could be wrong. I haven't been anywhere. We're just one man's opinion. And so I want to leave that out there and put that into the ether. I know that some of that makes some of you a little uncomfortable, but it's just my opinion. And I, listen, I could be wrong and I'm going to form an open invitation to the show. You I have, think that would be a great panel discussion to have with people. And, amen. NADP. You ever go to that? ADP? NADP. Oh, NADP. No. No? I know ADP, yeah. the payroll company, but I don't know NADP. Yeah. 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 Totally different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One's so, got an N in front of it. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. All right. So before we go, give me some trends. What are you seeing? What are you excited about this year for one? You're not quite one, one yet. Yeah. No, but we're already working one, ones. Yeah. So tell me what you're seeing, what you're excited about. I am excited about a lot of stuff. I think on the two big topics we focused on disability insurance and dental insurance, seeing a lot of engagement by employers and brokers in enhancing disability insurance. Um, both in contract elements and in who's paying for it, seeing a much bigger move to employer paid disability for everybody. In dental, I'm seeing a kind of a similar thing, just a move to richer benefits to get people excited about the benefits that are at their employer and to help enhance that standard of living around teeth whitening and, and some of the other things that may not be have been traditionally covered under a dental plan to make us all better for selfies. Have you seen more of the electronic toothbrush? Is that still going on? Yes. Beam Benefits does that. And then uh, They've got their own toothbrush that they do in that where they actually provide a toothbrush. I think that's a very innovative thing. I think that's going to become much more popular as well. So you had brought this up on the last show. Shout out to Fro at Beam. Yeah. And so then my question is, they should have credible experience on that. Is that bringing trend down? I would, you should have Fro on and ask him. Okay. I'll endorse you to him. All right. I would think they would because they're still in business and they're growing like crazy. So I would say empirically, it looks like yes. I'll buy that. All right. We will get a hold of him, Reverend John Ray, or Jam Master John Ray. Fro. Is that his name? Fro. Can That's I... what he goes by. Alex. Alex yeah. Fro. Okay. Does he have a Fro? No, actually. I think he's bald. So it's just ironic. <laughs> no, it's from his last name. <laughs> I see. Beam Benefits. I think we did talk to them. But yeah. At any rate, I take Christ. I don't want to take time away from our listeners or from you, good sir. So... If somebody wants to get in touch with you, do they want to do they get in touch with the guru or do you, they have to t- go to? Most what? people don't want to get in touch with me. LinkedIn's the best way to find me, though. Okay. I'm there. Benevolently lurking. Benevolently lurking, yes. yes. I post occasionally. Oh, yeah. I just like other people's things. Like, oh, that's a good point. Because a lot of people make good points. Have you, I, don't, I don't know if how much stuff you liked from me. I post um, on there. You should. 
I think I've locked you. It happens. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I've learned. I like most people, but see, I'm an introvert. I, I'm a militant introvert, that, which people find shocking. But yes, I'm not a people person. So whatever thing you said before about smiles to the universe, I was like, no, <laughs> I'm an introvert. I'm like, no smiles, not to anybody. Ever. <laughs> you must earn it. Yes. I just want to be alone in my house. Me too, especially the kids. <laughs> I'm like, it's, quiet. it's quiet. So very good. Listen, is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners? Is there any shout outs that you want to give to your colleagues or to your... Uh, lots of shout outs to people. And if I start the shout outs, I'll forget somebody and then they'll be mad that I forgot. So That's true. Lots of great people in the industry, lots of great consultants, carriers, providers. It's a fantastic world to be in. I couldn't wish to be in a better industry. Right. So I think if I kiss everybody's butt, I'm doing pretty good. All right. So smooches and hugs. This is mooches, hugs, and snuggles. Yes. All right. From your host, Patrick O'Rourke, your host and sponsor. I do speak across the country on these topics. If you want to learn more, get a speaker kit. It is at www.patrickorourke, and that's O R O U R K E dot me, patrickorourke.me. You can find me on Instagram and on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn as well. And. North Fulton Business Radio X. Thank you very much to my man, John Ray, and everybody at the North Fulton Business Rex, Business Radio X family. And to Renaissance Bank. And with that, until next time.